Hi, good evening. Let's begin. This is the regular council meeting for January 8th, 2018. The time is 7.30. Will the clerk please do roll call? Mayor Pro Tem Bliss. I'm here. Councilman Corbett. Here. Councilman Gettings. Here. Councilor Grafstein. Present. Councilwoman Scott. Here. Councilman Soltis. Here. Mayor Hartwell. Yes, I'm here. Uh, would you please rise if you're able for an invocation by Councilman Dave Soltis and remain standing for the pledge? In honor of Martin Luther King's upcoming day, January 15th, Martin Luther King Jr. said, human progress is neither automatic nor ine inevitable. Every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. The city of Madison Heights is our struggle for progress, both technology and as well as social. So let us here tonight become the tireless and passionate advocates for those, who, those most vulnerable and not forget those who cannot speak for, for themselves while living in distress. Let us here tonight become those, <clears throat> excuse me, dedicated individuals that King described and venture out another step towards a goal of social justice by our collective strength in order to provide hope, dignity, and equality for all those who need it. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thanks, please be seated. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda tonight? All right, we can go on to uh, business for the meeting. Uh, under A1, we have a public hearing and the second reading for proposed zoning text amendments, which is Ordinance 2123. Uh, Mr. Myers, do you have a report? Uh, yes, I do, Your Honor. On December, uh, December 11th, 2017, City Council approved Ordinance 2123 on the first reading to amend the city zoning ordinance as recommended by the Planning Commission and staff. The proposed amendments address how the city regulates and permits temporary signs to conform with the U.S. Supreme Court's Reed decision. The city currently regulates temporary signs based on the type of sign, such as real estate, garage sale, public or charitable, commercial, and non-commercial. This approach runs counter to the essential message of the Reed decision that sign codes must be content neutral. Accordingly, the draft amendments regulate temporary signs as a whole, regardless of sign content, establishing an overall square footage of signage permitted as well as locational criteria. In addition, a substitution clause is included for commercial signage, which would allow the placement of non a non-commercial message on a commercial sign, whether permanent or temporary. This language would essentially allow placement of free speech protected messages on commercial signs. This does not, however, go the other way. Commercial speech is not automatically protected or permitted in residential districts. Finally, a specific severability clause for the sign section of the zoning ordinance is included as well. This would be specific to the sign ordinance and is intended to increase the strength of the sign provisions should there be a challenge to any of the sections individually. Specifically, for residential properties, the city currently regulates temporary signs as non-commercial with a maximum size of 16 square feet and no limit on the number of signs or duration of placement. In addition, four garage sale signs are also permitted both on-site as well as off-site, with one permitted in the right-of-way. This is in direct conflict with the Supreme Court decision as it permits a single type of sign to be located in the public right-of-way based on the sign's content. The proposed amendment regulates temporary signs in residential districts as a total square feet, 16 square feet per address, with a specified limit on individual sign height of four feet and no limit on the number of signs up to the aggregate 16 square foot total allowed. In non-residential districts, the city currently regulates temporary signs for commercial properties via a permit process, allowing up to four temporary signs per year per address at a maximum size of 32 square feet. One additional sign is permitted for one month for a new business and real estate and construction signs are permitted without permit. The proposed amendment limits temporary signs to a, so a total 16 square feet per address with a specified limit of an on individual sign height of four feet and a limit of one temporary sign up to the 16 square foot total allowed. 
This approach eliminates the use of sign content as a regulatory device and would allow placement of temporary signs on private property up to a specified overall size limit. It would also eliminate permitting, streamlining, streamlining the process for businesses with no impact on residents, but I would point out that it would be negative in terms of some lost commercial temporary sign permit revenue. In addition, these amendments would eliminate placement of garage sale signs in the public right of way, eliminating the disparate treatment of such signs based on their content, and garage sale signs, by the way, are the only non-traffic regulatory signs permitted in the public right of way. Uh, the Supreme Court, however, was clear that regulation of temporary signs based solely on sign content would not pass muster. The zoning text amendments also include amendments to defense regulations that the Planning Commission reviewed at several meetings. The draft amendments address fence locations in the commercial and industrial districts, focusing on the primary concerns of a lack of setbacks, aesthetics, and visibility at drives and walks. These amendments would increase fence setbacks adjacent to roads in both commercial and industrial districts, as well as prohibit barbed wire fencing in commercial districts. Barbed wire would still be allowed in, in industrial districts. Uh, the proposed amendments reflect all the Planning Commission comments made previously. Uh, the City Attorney has reviewed the changes and indicates that the Planning Commission has complied with the relevant local and state laws uh, regarding amendments to the zoning ordinance and accordingly uh, the Planning Commission, City Attorney's Office and staff and I recommend the Council adopt 2123 on the second and final reading following the public hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, before there's a motion, uh, I will open a public hearing on this matter. Public hearing is open for anyone from the public to discuss Ordinance 2123. Now is the opportunity to discuss this item. Good evening, ma'am. Gloria Moore, 27368 Dartmouth. Um, I just have a question. Uh, does that mean that are we doing the same thing with the garage signs and it's just under a different law or is there a, a totally different setup? Um, Your Honor, it's, it's, it's a totally different setup. Mr. Schaefer's here. To Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the, to answer that question, garage sale signs would still be permitted. Uh, the only substantive difference would be that they would not be allowed to be placed within the public right of way. Public hearing still open on this matter. Would anyone else like to address City Council? Okay, no one's asked to be recognized. The public hearing is closed. What's the wish of City Council? Your Honor. Yes, please. I move that we adopt Ordinance 2123 on second reading. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Thank you. Motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, seconded by Councilwoman Scott, to adopt Ordinance 2123 on second reading. Is there any discussion from City Council? Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. Just a question. I'm sorry, uh, Jim, if you would, uh, I have a question. I, I'm going to ask you, but it may go to Mr. Chairman. Although content is not a basis for uh, regulation of signs, uh, what about timing and, uh, for placement? For example, let us say the uh, council considered an amendment to allow signs in the public right of way on Saturdays and Sundays from nine in the morning until five, and only during those time periods. Would that uh, pass muster as you understand it? Uh, Mr. Mayor, yeah. um, if I understand you correctly, you're saying that council would make an amendment to allow any type of signage in the right-of-way for a specified period of time. The only discrimination would be on the basis of the timing. For example, noon to five, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, nine to five, Monday. With, with uh, Mr. Mayor, with no differentiation between? No. I don't see where that would run afoul of the Supreme Court's uh, provisions, um, but Larry, I don't know, some help from a legal standpoint. I don't pretend to be a scholar in that regard. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I read the uh, Reed decision before the last council meeting when we were looking at the, uh, the zoning ordinance text amendments, but I don't, I don't recall that Reed 
really dealt with uh, the question that Councilman Corbett's raising in terms of time. It really, it really stood for the proposition that the Arizona uh, sign ordinance, which which differentiated between different signs based on content, was not going to pass constitutional muster. So I don't, I don't recall the decision dealing with. With the question that's being raised, uh, Mr. Mayor, I would just add one comment. I, the um, the Supreme Court does talk to three issues: time, place, and manner, as the um, the three components of what they uh, specify for for regulation. Uh, my only comment to the to the discussion would be: um, we routinely pick up literally thousands of these signs, uh, not just on weekends. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's throughout, typically they're placed uh, late hours of the evening, sure. um, and, and they're throughout the entire uh, city. I would urge some caution in that regard uh, from the standpoint of uh, if you have a three-day period where they're not, not being picked up, um, you're going to see a substantial change in the character of the, the corners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not recommending anything from the yeah. seat of my pants this evening. It's just uh, um, there is a, a certain blowback that will be occurring to council and to staff uh, over the next uh, few months, and especially as we go into summertime. And uh, so I'm just looking for a possible avenue for people who are, frankly, looking to have garage sales. Uh, who signs, uh, we, you know, we had gone to some great length and no amount of aggravation to uh, to find a way to incorporate them into some sensible pattern. Well, now that regulation is gone and it's so long, there's nothing in the public right away and it's on private property without restriction. So, but yeah. that, that can be very limiting as anybody who's ever given a garage sale will tell you. So anyway, my point was simply to just question whether or not this was this was simply a free speech issue as you understood it. And we can address later on, we have plenty of time to, to consider the pros and cons of uh, any exceptions. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Just one further comment, and that is that it's clear from the, from the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Reed that with regard to um, whatever timing mechanism you were looking at, it would have to apply to temporary signs across the board. We couldn't, we couldn't regulate. Uh, I, I, I understood that. that yeah. Apply to me. I just, I just wanted to make sure council was aware of that. You can't, you can't treat one temporary sign based no. on content different from something else. No. Mr. Mayor, my intent, just so I'm clear, was not to restrict anybody's speech, but to look to expand it in a limited sense. But like I said, we've got time to look at that. Thank you, sir. Other discussion from City Council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. A question of Mr. Shager. Um, it does mention here that there will be lost commercial temporary sign permit revenues. Can you give me an estimate of how much we take in each year? Sure, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, 2016, we brought in $1,350. And 2017, $1,125. Um, and just to remind council what those um, permit fees cover is the administrative costs of accepting the application, entering it into the system, and then having code enforcement um, uh, verify the signs location and monitor the signs uh, elimination or removal after the permit period. So uh, I wouldn't view that as, as income as much as covering uh, partially our expenses. Okay. Your Honor, one more point about that. Despite the small loss in revenue, it would also uh, free up code enforcement time otherwise spent on signs, which I think would be a positive for the department. That, okay. That's correct, as well as administrative time. Yeah. All right. And I would add uh, it's a, another activity or, or function that uh, our businesses would not need to come into City Hall to, to perform. Right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my observation... Um, well, first of all, thank you to Jim and your staff and the Planning Commission, um, especially uh, Chairman Andy Wakelin on the Planning Board, for working on this issue for a little over a year. Um, this is a very technical issue. Uh, my observation, and feel free to correct me or um, supplement my comment, is that we're no longer, although we still regulate size, 
Um, we've completely done away with the timing. Like we used to limit businesses. You can only have a grand opening sign for the first 30 days or uh, the, the, the weekend spaghetti dinner sign can only be up for 30 days or something like that. We're just we're getting out of the business of putting a time clock on how long how long temporary signs can be up. So in theory, that could mean a temporary sign could be up 365 days a year for as long as that business is in business. Mr. Mayor, that is correct for the commercial signage. For the residential signage, that's not a change. Uh, there, there was no time limits on the on the residential. Oh, side. okay. But on All the right. commercial side, that is a correct statement. Three, uh, excuse me, four months for a temporary sign, and then an additional one month for new businesses. Okay, and <laughs> I don't know how like outlandish my fear is. But now that we don't have any time limitations on commercial temporary signs, um, I think some businesses could install really nice, fancy temporary signs as almost a way to get around permanent signage. You picture some of those uh, big commercial development signs, you know, with the four by fours, with the you know, really nicely painted billboards. I mean, that is technically a temporary sign on commercial land. That sign, if it's painted nice, painted nice matte black, you know, that, that could be there forever. It, and so they wouldn't have to go through the, the expense of getting a permanent brick or electric sign. Um, and so that's just one of my fears is, is <coughs> the commercial wor world could worry about that. It, <laughs> is that possible and is it also far-fetched? <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, it is possible that you would see somebody um, put those out there. Um, the experience that we've had in residential uh, with essentially the same concept has been you don't see that. Um, and you see a lot of the temporary signage that, that uh, regulates uh, if a property is for sale, for instance, typically that sign comes down uh, fairly promptly after sale. Uh, with construction signage, um, typically that sign comes down fairly quickly after the construction activity. Um, however, you are correct. Um, that's the dilemma or the bind that this decision has put us as well as every other community in. If we don't come up with a method of allowing these um, in a way that you don't have to read it to allow it, uh, then uh, we continue to have the, the issue or the problem of selectively enforcing based on what a sign says. And the Supreme Court was very clear we can't do that. Right. The city is getting out of the business of reading the signs and picking what rules applies based on our reading. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the time, Council. Any other discussion from Council? All right, a motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, seconded by Councilwoman Scott to adopt on second reading ordinance 2123. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. All right, next uh, for the, uh, tonight's meeting is meeting open to the public. This is the, the general discussion of any subject. If you'd come to the podium now, meeting is open to the public. It'd be helpful, but not required if you could give your name and address and affiliation. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Gloria Moore, 27368 Dartmouth. Um, I'm affiliated with uh, Friends of the Madison Heights Area Senior Citizens. I'm also a, a resident. And I would like to thank the uh, Korean Church for, uh, for taking in the new location for the polling um, and allowing us to vote there. And, and shame on the uh, key grace for giving our city clerk a hard time about allowing us to vote there. And also, um, 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 Donna Mitchell was extremely successful with her Christmas dinner. On, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's very nice for her, and she's going to be having an egg uh, hunt this spring. Also, met, met Friends of the Madison Heights Area Senior Citizens on uh, January 16th is going to have, have our, we're going to have our third Tuesday public meeting over at Wilkinson G Middle School. Uh, Everybody is welcome. Beverages and snacks are on us. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Good evening, Mr. Sanders. Happy New Year. Thank you. You're welcome. I noticed that uh, Paul Sanders, I live at 26433 Rialto Street. Uh, I noticed we don't have a winter festival. And after this last week, it was cold. I know that. But it snowed. And we've got one of the greatest sledding hills around. Well, my kids really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And I think it's only right and proper because I asked many people, and the polling was split almost 50-50, a little bit towards the police department, but the idea of having a sled competition between the fire department and the police department, well, the people felt that uh, the police department could pull a sled up to the top and slide down a little bit faster than the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but uh, yeah. possibly an annual festival would yeah. find out if this is true or not. I'm guessing that was a former uh, policeman who uh, suggested that, right? Yeah, the winner could be <laughs> supplied possibly with hot chocolate and some chili. And knowing that they won for the year. Now, I don't know if you could pass out uh, stickers or something, the winning team, so possibly people could, uh, and I'm not saying you'd have to, but possibly, uh, say, $5 a ticket, so somewhat bid on this and the winning would go Campbell. towards replacing police car or police equipment or the fire equipment that would be left to the winning side i'm not saying you have to do this but winter festival is a lot of fun for kids and say the second week of february when it's warming up but it's still possibly to snow and it'd be kind of nice to see I believe in the fire department. I really do believe in the police department. Let's see who could pull a sled up the hill fastest and then slide it down. So with that, that's it. I hope you all had a really good time, and I hope you did okay in the cold. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Bye-bye. Well, good evening. Ceremonies. <laughs> good evening, Mayor Hartwell, Council. Thank you. Brian Ellison, uh, 26029 Delton Street. Um, also a candidate for U.S. Senate for this year. So uh, check out my website, ellison4senate.com. Uh, here briefly to talk about a couple problems that I've noticed with the, uh, our police department. Um, I, I believe some of the members of the department are, uh, tend to abuse their powers, um, openly show contempt to citizens, and and uh, purposefully violate citizens' rights. The unfortunate part about this, the most unfortunate part about this is that some of these uh, officers are actually supervisors. Um, I can give you a brief description of an incident I had. Uh, driving down over the summer, I was driving down to Cedar Point, I got pulled over, I got a ticket for speeding, and also had a ticket because I didn't have proof of insurance. The officer explained to me needed to have a any sworn law officer could sign off on the insurance portion of the ticket and I could take care of the rest of the ticket by mail. I brought the ticket into the Madison Heights Police Department with my proof of insurance and I encountered the lieutenant at the at the desk. I explained the situation. I said I had a ticket I needed signed off so that I could pay the ticket in Romulus. He said we don't do that here. I said I don't understand why you wouldn't do that here. He said, no, there's a $25 fee. You have to go to the court to do that. I said, that's not what this ticket says. This ticket says that I just need any sworn law enforcement officer to sign it. His response was, well, then go find some sworn law enforcement officer. And I said, I'm looking at one. Um, he refused. He said he, he, he wasn't going to do it. That's not how they operated. I proceeded to read the ticket out loud as he walked away. I proceeded to read it louder and louder until another officer came out. The second officer that came out uh, was not a lieutenant. This was a, just an officer. I explained to him the situation. His quick response was similar to the lieutenant's in that we don't do that here. And I said, hold on for a second. Will you please just listen to what this ticket says because there's a very good possibility that this court operates differently than the court you're familiar with. I read the instructions to him. The officer agreed to sign it. He signed it. I paid my ticket for the speeding portion of it and the court accepted the signature from the officer as the document suggested they would. 
This lieutenant who refused to do his job uh, is the same lieutenant who I had a problem with previously who also refused to do his job when I tried to file a complaint against another officer. This leads me to kind of the second point that I have and the problem I have with the police department is I think that they target people and I think they're vindictive. Shortly after this incident happened with this lieutenant, within a week I received two tickets for parking in front of my house on garbage day before 7.30 in the morning. Uh, I understand that it's, that it's illegal and I would expect that uh, my habits haven't changed over the last seven years that I've lived here, but it was very, seems like quite a coincidence that it was within a week of this incident happening that I received two tickets. I promptly paid my tickets. I let it go and I figured maybe the lieutenant felt good about himself. He got even with me and cost me a hundred bucks. A couple months later, I got another ticket. Uh, this time I, uh, I posted a picture of it on Facebook and thanked the officer for giving it to me and for looking out for the well-being of us as our, uh, my, th my car that was blocking the front of my property where there was no trash out before 7.30 in the morning was certainly not harming anyone. And uh, it's unfortunate that trash day is Wednesday, which is also late start for my son who drives the car that's parked in the street so he doesn't leave until after 8 o'clock in the morning. After making my post on Facebook, uh, the next week, before 7.30 in the morning, I encountered another police officer coming down the street uh, to get, give tickets out. I questioned why was Delton Street targeted two weeks in a row before 7.30 in the morning? And again, maybe it's just a coincidence, and, and then again, maybe it's not. Uh, the whole trash day thing is a ticket is a whole nother issue. This is a $50 uh, fee for people. Uh, generally, uh, you know, these are the average income in Madison Heights certainly is not a high income. $50 means a lot to these people. Um, and the fact that it's the way that it's enforced by targeting neighborhoods before 730 in the morning is clear that it's being done as an, as an opportunity to generate revenue rather than for the intended purpose of the law, which is to keep people off the street during the trash pickup times. The latest ticket that I got, I haven't paid. It's, uh, it was a $50 ticket, I'm sure I, I didn't go to court. It, I'm sure it's been assessed a $15 fine on top of the state penalties that it's gonna get. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do about it yet, but I'm open to talk to the city attorney about it. Uh, I did try and reach out to the police chief. My emails were rejected. I forwarded it to the city attorney and asked that he forwarded it to the police chief, and I haven't heard back. Um, so in summary, I just think that uh, the people of Madison Heights deserve better than a vindictive police force, and uh, I think that uh, the officers should be uh, more professional, honor their oath, and show their citizens some professionalism. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting still open to the public. Would anyone else like to address city council? Okay, no one's asked to be recognized. Uh, meeting open to the public is closed. Next on our agenda is D1, uh, the five-year capital improvement plan from the city manager's office for years 2019 to 2023. Uh, Mr. Myers? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, city's financial policies indicate that the city will develop a multi-year plan for capital improvement uh, purchases and projects, updated annually, and make capital improvements in accordance with the plan. Uh, the plan is presented to council each year to allow council and public an opportunity to provide input during the early stages of the budget, prepara budget preparation process. After the council has had an opportunity to offer comments or ask questions, staff and I recommend that council vote to receive and file the plan. Thank you. What's the wish of city council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. So I move that the uh, council receive and file the 2019 to 2023 five-year capital improvement plan as recommended by the administration. Thank you, is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Thank you, motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott to re receive and file the five-year capital improvement plan as recommended by the administration. Is there any discussion from council? Thank you, let's vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The motion carries. All right, we can go to item F1, under bid awards or purchases, 
and uh, it's a purchase from the fire department for defibrillators. Uh, Mr. Myers? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, our current year approved budget includes $80,000 for the upgrade of the fire department's engines from basic life support to advanced life support, and that's based on council's approved goal in this year's goal plan. On November 1st, the city issued uh, on our Mitten uh, bidding network, our purchasing consortium, an invitation to bid to upgrade the engines. One bid from Physio Controls was received by the deadline of November 17th. The price quoted for the basic unit itself was 38425 not including the required accessories for the operation of the unit. Uh, the total for one functioning unit was 43881 which was above our budgeted amount. The department conducted a thorough analysis of its current and future needs regarding monitors and defibrillators. As noted in the staff report, uh, the fire department has been having significant issues with the Philips MRX defibrillators currently being used due to an ongoing FDA hold on parts, and that's because Philips has consistently failed their quality assurance testing, uh, and that has taken out uh, that has taken out one of the Philips MRXs out of service, uh, which is unable to be repaired. Uh, also due to the, to the temporary license downgrading of our reserve ambulance uh, from ALS to BLS while this monitor is out of service, and the recently discovered opportunity that we could reduce cost by submitting a collaborative bid with the City of Royal Oak for a greater number of units, staff decided that following notice to physio controls, the first bid would be rejected with no award and a new collaborative bid would be issued uh, with the City of Royal Oak. And before I continue, I want to note to council that uh, this happened late last week. Uh, a second Phillips monitor stopped working and Phillips is basically not honoring their <laughs> service agreements with us. Uh, and we're, we're covering this situation by borrowing backup monitors from Ferndale, but that's, that's only on a short-term basis. Uh, so we went through another bidding process with Royal Oak. Uh, three bids were submitted from Physio Controls, Zoll, and Coromed. The bid from Coromed was administri administratively rejected for not meeting the bid specifications. After a review of the remaining two qualified uh, bids, staff and I recommend that council approve three motions. First, to award the bid to Physio Control based on the bid specifications and overall purchase price of $105,999.54 for the initial purchase of three units in fiscal 2017-18, that's our current year. Second, to approve the necessary budget amendment of $25,999.54 from the general fund fund balance to the fire department machinery and capital uh, equipment capital account, and that would be an appropriation of funds requiring a five vote supermajority. And third, to approve a contingent purchase of an additional two units at the same line item, price, same line item pricing for a total not to exceed $62,027.76 and that's pending approval of the fiscal year 2018-19 budget, so that would be in the next fiscal year. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Uh, City Council, would you please uh, someone make a motion on the first item uh, about awarding, awarding the bid? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I move that the Council award the bid to Physio Control based on the uh, published specifications and overall purchase price of $105,999.54 for the initial purchase of three units in FY 2017-18. Thank you, is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Thank you, motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott to award the bid to Physio Control based on the bid specifications and overall purchase price of $105,999.54 for the initial purchase of three units in fiscal year 17-18. Any discussion on this first motion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. Just, uh, I, I, I read literally from the, um, from the report, but I want to just, I want to clarify that when you say for the initial purchase of three units, you are talking the first of three, or three units total acquisition? Three units, there are three units total. Right, okay. Units total. Yes. All right. I, I had to read it a few times myself to get that clear. Yeah, okay. Your Honor, init initial meant for uh, purchase I, yeah. in this first fiscal year versus the next. The second, fiscal. right, gotcha. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion on this first item? Okay, let's vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. All right, motion one carries.
Can City Council uh, make a motion on the second item requiring uh, the budget amendment, budget amendment? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. I make a motion to approve the necessary budget amendment of $25,999.54 from general fund, fund balance to the fire department machinery and equipment capital account. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gettings. Second. Very good. A motion was made by Councilwoman Scott, seconded by Councilman Gettings, to approve the budget amendment, which is necessary, of $25,999.54 from the general fund fund balance to the fire department machinery and equipment capital account. Is there discussion from Council? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed say no. Motion two carries. Will someone please make a motion on the final third item? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I move that the council approve the purchase of an additional two units at the same line item pricing, total not to exceed $62,027.76. Understood that this is pending the approval of the FY1819 budget. Very good, is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Soltis? Second. Thank you. Motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilman Soltis, to approve the purchase of an additional two units at the same light item price for a total not to exceed $62,027.76, pending approval of the fiscal year budget for 2018 and 19. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Chief, if you've got a second, I'm just curious, when are we gonna take delivery on the initial units? What kind of training is, if any, is required for staffing and when it'll be operational? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, we suspect in the next two to three weeks we'll be getting the new units. Uh, training will happen immediately and we should have those in service within about a week. This is a different uh, company and different brand, so it will be some different functions okay. and some training will be involved, but very quickly. Good. Thank you, sir. Um, any other discussion? Uh, Your Honor, just, yes. just one administrative point. I want to clarify that the bid prices will remain valid through that period. They, that they were included in the spec, so they, that price will be on it since, since it's a future purchase. Oh, uh, Chief Lolito, you explain how Ferndale helped us and uh, just uh, it's very thoughtful well, of them to work with us. Oh yeah, we, they, they took us, we were in the middle of buying this past Friday. Um, we have three total monitors that we bought from Phillips back in 2013, the end of 2013. Um, we usually, our life, ex life expectancy is usually eight to nine years. So this caught us by surprise back in October when one of our monitors went down and Phillips has not honored the contract that we have paid for, uh, they will not honor it, they won't return phone calls. And this past Friday, another unit went down, so it left us with one. So uh, we made arrangements with the Ferndale and they gave us their backup, but at any moment they could, they might need theirs back. So that's why it's critical that we get these, these new ones in. I understand on a daily basis, our, our city is collaborating with other cities, but thank you for sharing that story. And, if the city manager could send a, a just a thank you letter from the mayor and council, just thanking uh, Ferndale just for the small but very important yep. uh, sign of friendship. Yeah, if we did Certainly not, right. yeah, mayor, if, Mr. Mayor, if we did not get that from Ferndale, we we would have had to uh, shut down one of our ALS units, which would have been difficult for us to to manage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion from city council on this third and final item? Mr. Mr. Mayor, just, just, yes, to, Mr. Corbett. just to the point, um, no, you're all set, Chief. Yeah, the chief made a comment that uh, we paid for uh, services we didn't receive from Phillips. That sounds like something that, that might fall under the bailiwick of the city attorney's office. Uh, oh. Has that been referred over there? I've reached out to uh, um, Mr. Gertowski. Um, a couple weeks ago, so we've talked about it, at least getting some of our money back for the service agreement they're not honoring. Um, but it, we, this could be a long-term thing about a class action lawsuit. But we have, I have spoken to the city attorney. Well, yeah, this isn't a tire that didn't function. This is fairly serious, and the taxpayers should be made whole as best as possible on this. But yeah, we're not the only community that's, uh, that's facing this. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. We'll follow up again with the city attorney's office. Thank you. Any other discussion from council? All right, let's vote on this uh, third item. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. 
The motion carries. Next on the agenda is item G1, which is ordinance 2124, regarding the new polling location for precinct number two and a pol polling location name change for precinct number five. Mr. Myers. Yes, Your Honor. The city clerk reports that for the past several elections, including our most recent November 2017 city general election, there have been logistical issues with election precinct number two located at the Keys Grace Academy at 27321 Hampton. These issues include locked and chained doors, poor lighting, buses blocking parking spots, lost city election equipment, condition and upkeep of the building, and difficulty confirming access to and location in the building for each election. Uh, the city clerk has made several attempts to correct each of these issues, but they are reoccurring in nature. And as she pointed out, points out in her report, makes administering the elections at this location very difficult uh, for herself and the election inspectors on election day. After the November election, the city clerk met with Reverend Jung of the Korean First Central United Methodist Church, 500 West Gardenia, uh, who has agreed to let the city use their facility as an alternate location for election precinct two. As the clerk reports, the church is located three blocks north of Keys Grace Academy and would not cause an inconvenience for the voters of this precinct to access. The church has a large community room and a gymnasium, either of which could be used for the polling location. In a large turnout election, such as a presidential general election, there's also a large queuing area for voters inside the facility as well. The facility has ample lighted parking as, and is accessible to individuals with disabilities. The city clerk has confirmed with the state of Michigan Bureau of Elections that any change to a polling location must be done by the city council through an ordinance amendment at least 60 days in advance of the next election. In addition, each voter in the precinct experiencing the change must be notified. Uh, the final reading and adoption of an ordinance of this ordinance at the beginning of the year will be well within the statutory requirement and give the city clerk's office ample time to mail new voter registration cards to each voter within precinct number two, as well as publicize the change on the city's website, social media, and through our cable channel for an extended period prior to the next election. And we will certainly also reach out to CNG newspapers for a local article as well. Staff and I recommend the council approve on first reading ordinance 2124 to amend section 10-1B of the city code to designate the Korean First Central United Methodist Church located at 500 West Gardenia as the voting place for precinct number two and as a housekeeping matter to change the name of, precinct, of the precinct number five polling location from Shane Halls to Madison Elementary. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. What's the wish of city council? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. I move that the uh, council approve on first reading ordinance 2124, uh, which is an amendment um, to section 10-1B of the city code, which will designate the Korean First Central United Methodist Church as a voting precinct number two. Do you want the latter part of that included in it? Or is yeah, it all in one. Keeping? Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two, and is um, also to change the name of precinct number five from Shane Holes to Madison Elementary. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Thank you. Motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott to approve on first reading ordinance 2124, which amends section 10-1B of the city code, which designates the Korean First Central United Methodist Church as precinct number two polling place and renames precinct five from Shane Halls to Madison Elementary. Is there any discussion? Mr. Your Mayor? Uh, Mrs. Scott? Um, could somebody please specify what the lost city election equipment was and if anybody will be held responsible for replacing that? Yes, does the clerk have? Your Mayor? Yes. Your Honor? Um, yes, it was some vote, voting booths and some voting signs. Okay. So what's it, was there, could you estimate the expense of that for um, us to replace it? The voting, there, there was approximately, I don't hear the number, specifically around five voting booths. Okay. And that, they're about $150 a piece. And the signs we, we create here, so that's an internal cost. Okay. Any other discussion from council? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, just a uh, uh, another quick question on, on this. 
in the past, we've looked at some of these smaller individual precincts as a chance to consolidate into a voting location. Uh, did the, the senior center, Wilkinson, to where we could have house multiple precincts, and in the case of the senior center, we just merged them into one. Was that considered in, in this case, uh, merging that with uh, you know Edmondson or Wilkinson's voting location? And if so, wh why did we choose to go a uh, different route and keep this individual? Hmm, interesting question. Uh, staff have an answer or thoughts? Yes. Yes, Your please. Honor. So um, this is taking the place of the Edmondson School. So that is, that's what this location is. Um, Edison. Edison. Edison, I'm sorry. Ed I'm sorry, not, that's a different school district. So that is one of the reasons. And that already has, Precinct 2 has, um, already has two school districts in that precinct. It has Royal Oak and Madison school districts in to throw a third one in there. We couldn't combine those. It would be very difficult to administer. They have three different ballot styles in that precinct. However, in the future, it could be a consideration to add a precinct to that location as opposed to um, combining them. Any other uh, discussion from council? Okay. I, uh, a couple of us council members live in precinct number two, so I'll, I'll be f uh, following the public notices. Um, maybe if we, uh, I mean, the facts are the facts, but I, I would prefer if we don't rub it in the face of Keys Grace Academy and those people responsible for that school. Maybe we can focus on the positive qualities of the new church. Yes. Uh, um, Your Honor, if I may. <laughs> Working with Keys Grace Academy personnel, has, they have been very nice and, and, and friendly. It's just these issues just keep reoccurring. I don't know if it's something beyond their control. It's not a, it's not a personality issue at all. It's just. Okay, great. Thank you for commenting. Any other discussion from council or we can vote? All right, let's vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. And the motion carries. There's no unfinished business, so we can go on to the minutes. Can I please have a motion regarding the December minutes? Mr. Mayor? Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. I move that we adopt the minutes of the regular council meeting of December 11, 2017 as printed. Yes, sir. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. In support. Thank you. Motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, seconded by Councilman Corbett to adopt as printed the regular meeting minutes of December 11th, 2017. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed say no. The motion carries. All right, uh, we have some appointments to our boards and commissions. First on uh, the list for um, reappointments, uh, does council see under construction board, would someone make a nomination? For Mr. Mr. Felzon. Mr. Mayor, I yeah. move that uh, Douglas Felzon be reappointed to the Construction Board of Appeals for a two year term, uh, which will expire uh, December 31st, 2019. Thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor. Mr. Bliss? I support. Thank you. Motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss to appoint Douglas Felzon to the Construction Board of Appeals for a two-year term expiring December 2019. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. Thank you, Doug. Um, Council, I'll draw your attention to the Historical Commission and Ms. Richards. Any motions? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. I make a motion to reappoint Lila Richards to a term on the Historical Commission for three years expiring the 28th of February in 2021. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Support? Thank you. Motion was made by Councilwoman Scott, seconded by Councilman Corbett, to appoint Lila Richards to a three-year term expiring February 28, 28 2021. Um, on the Historical Commission. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion carries. I'll direct Council's attention to ITAC and Mr. Mundy. Any motions? 
Your Honor. Yes, sir. I move that we reappoint Mike Monday to ITAC with a term that would expire February 10, 2021. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Thank you. A motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, seconded by Councilwoman Scott, to reappoint Mike Mundy uh, to ITAC for a three year term expiring February 10, 2021. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed say no. The motion carries. Next page, I see um, two applicants to the zoning board. If there's any motions. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Move to reappoint Michael Honer and Martha Kehoe to terms on the zoning board of appeals, which will expire on the 1st of February, 2021. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Mayor. Yes, please. Second. Thank you. A motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott to reappoint first Michael Honer and second Martha Kehoe to three-year terms on the Zoning Board of Appeals, terms to expire February 2021. Any discussion? All right, all in favor of appointing these two people signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motions carry, congratulations. Any other applications or nominations? I don't have any. All right, there's no executive session scheduled tonight. So before we adjourn tonight's meeting, I invite any closing comments and we can begin for Mr. Corbett. Um, just uh, just want to wish everybody a uh, happy and uh, prosperous and peaceful new year. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Bliss. Uh, yes, Your Honor. One of the things that that I've tended to do over the past couple of goal cycles is to, to highlight uh, some of the goals that I've presented here during open comments. Uh, so that way the, the citizens that are present and those watching at home can get kind of a glimpse into some of the things that we'll be talking about here during the goals process and in the subsequent budget meetings. Uh, one of the items that, that I wanted to, to bring up actually doesn't have much, if any, of a cost to it. And that's the idea that we can pinpoint some underutilized land within the city. Uh, we've got probably a dozen or so pieces like that. Uh, there's land where the Little House on Hales used to be that's uh, in the back of Madison Elementary. Uh, our, our park shelter, the JC building here at Civic Center Park is underutilized. Uh, the land uh, out in front of the gazebo, you know, what are, what are some of the things that we can do with that land, both on a temporary and long-term basis? I mean, even the land next to uh, the Nature Center is also land that the city owns. And so one of the things that I'm proposing is we, we have all of these great boards. Uh, we just reappointed a, a half a dozen people to them <clears throat> tonight. And so taking, taking their voices and their expertise, putting them in a room, doing some sort of a collaborative uh, town hall-ish thing that, where we can, as council and with all of our board members, be able to take in some ideas from those board members of short-term and long-term ways to utilize some of this underutilized property in the city uh, could be very beneficial for us as we go into uh, goal planning for next year. I mean, there might be some short-term things like the, the arts board uh, could find some great ways to utilize that space with, with public art. Uh, recreation might have some great ideas. Uh, historical commission might have use for that land or use for a building for a short-term display com commemorative in nature uh, so there's a lot of great ways that we can get that get the opinions of our board members who are the most active uh, folks in our city people that we rely on uh, day in and day out uh, and be able to utilize their feedback to then better our city in subsequent years uh, and so I, I'm I'm excited about that. I'm excited that it wouldn't cost very much. Uh, heck, I'll, I'll buy the, uh, the, the drinks and donuts and uh, have them on the table in the back. But it'll be a, uh, a good time to be able to get that feedback. And then uh, we as council can determine what we want to do with the feedback that we're given, uh, rank some of the ideas as they come in, uh, and then be able to present those back out in a public meeting like this. 
So it's, it's something I'm interested in. Anybody in the audience uh, here tonight at home, uh, anybody who'd like to email or call me you know, with, with ideas on, uh, on what land and pieces we should consider. I know staff is, is looking into that as a, as a part of the proposed goal. Uh, what are some things that they would like to highlight? Uh, but anybody in the public, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts as well so we can make sure that uh, those plots are, are considered. And if you have an idea for a particular one, shoot that over as well. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gennings? Just wish everyone a happy new year and hope you have a good 2018. Nothing else, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, sir. City Attorney, Mr. Sherman. I have nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, City Manager, Mr. Myers. Uh, yes, Your Honor, and also in addition to wishing everyone a happy new year and prosperous 2018, I want to give a shout out to our, our Department of Public Services personnel. Uh, we've had bitter cold temperatures, in fact, the longest streak in Michigan, I understand. Uh, and over the last several weeks during those temperatures, our DPS crews have been tasked with managing five snow-related events. And one of those was a uh, was a snow emergency on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and and for those who know how the plowing operations work, that that involves the drivers uh, working rotating 16-hour shifts, and it occurred directly over the Christmas holidays. Um, during that same time period, uh, the DPS crews repaired seven water main breaks, and and all of those take take away from their abilities to uh, uh, to do the other parts of their jobs. As as, as many of you know, we're in the middle of a major water meter replacement program at the same time. So um, I just want to I just want to thank the DPS for their their service and keeping our roads clear and our infrastructure in good shape. And sometimes that's in the worst of conditions. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. City Clerk, Ms. Prince. No comments, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Grafstein. I just want to uh, echo what Mr. Meyer said and say thank you to DPS. You guys did a great job uh, in a short period of time and hopefully we don't have to deal with that again. And I just wanna wish everybody a happy new year. Very good, Ms. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would like to ask the city to issue a condolence resolution to the family of Edmund Tatarek, who passed away on January 2nd this year from a seven-year illness. Um, you may remember Ed, he's a former resident, but he lived in Madison Heights for a long time, raised his six children here, um, was very active in scouts, and also served on the Lampier School Board, and many um, facets of the community received his his um, volunteerism, and I know that it's a better place because of Ed. So I would like to issue a condolence resolution to the family. Um, also, I wanted to thank you so much to Donna Mitchell, who got uh, the idea that she wanted to have a party for people that would not have family dinners on Christmas. And she not only completed the dinner plans, but she secured gifts for those people, um, which I think is a wonderful sacrifice, and she did it very quickly. And um, we mentioned, I believe, that the, they had it held at the St. Ephraim um, at the church hall there. And I think that she deserves a round of applause or maybe a, a proclamation for doing that that day and also getting several people together. And I know that Dave also has um, an event that he had, and I think he, he should thank people for that one too. So that's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Soltis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councilwoman Marjean Scott is correct that we had the police um, and fire Christmas dinners. Um, Fire had one because they had one shift, and then the police had three, and that went just as spectacular as the other two years. Uh, Betty Ross is the one that sponsored the food. Again, it's a full course meal. Uh, we had overwhelming response of Christmas cards for uh, all both public safety, um, which was really appreciated. We, we got gift cards, we got checks. I mean, it's just uh, overwhelming uh, the support that we got. So I appreciate it from everybody. Um, and secondly, uh, don't forget Martin Luther King, again, it's January 15th this year. Uh, I think it's a wonderful time to reflect on all the achievements and sacrifices that that he made, as well as the, the whole entire civil rights movement. 
Uh, there's a lot of history there. There's a lot to be learned and, and brought into the, the present day. Um, so please take the opportunity to reflect on that and, and Google as much as you can because it's, it's worth it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I do want to thank our employees who worked throughout the holidays, those that were scheduled and those that who had uh, come in on a snow emergency. Um, we are such a well-run city of professional full-time full departments, public safety and DPS, and it uh, makes our lives as lay people so much easier and convenient and safer to have employees that really value their job and their training and their skills. So thank you to all those who worked over the holidays, and thank you to those who will continue to be dedicated to our fine little city. Thanks to everyone who came to us to speak tonight. Uh, is there any other business before City Council? All right, hearing none, the meeting is adjourned.